Okay, so managing files, what goes up must come down if we want to upload or download files in an MVC site. Uh, to be honest with you, of course, the uh, uh, people working with web forms have had it easy. They have these advanced controls that kind of automate the whole process for them. Uh, we can get the same job done fairly easily uh, with MVC and Razor. So two main aspects really to think about here. We've got to get them up, we've got to get them down, and we'll hand have to write the code to handle that ourselves because we don't have those uh, fancy controls. The other thing is where we're going to store them while they're up there, right? Think about the jug we're tossing balls up in the air. If they disappear up at the top, where did they go? Well, we have to figure out that aspect as well. So two main choices. We can store files on the uh, file system of the web server itself, perhaps creating a structure of directories, subdirectories, a whole hierarchical if you want, or just a simple uploads folder off the root of the web uh, website. And there you go. Or we can also put them in a database, or you can do both, obviously, as well. Just to talk about advantages and disadvantages, just to think about this for a little bit. Obviously, some advantages to the file system. It's very easy, and in fact, it's so easy, I don't even really think I have to spend much time on it. We can see the files in their folders. You can manage them. Uh, backups are easily handled with just any other kind of file backup approach, right? Checking what has been changed since the last backup and so on. And, you know, performance-wise, there can be a little bit of an advantage to just having them there. And uh, along with the easier to code business, all you need is a hyperlink on your web page pointing to the file's location, and it will just take care of downloading it for you. But there are some real cons to managing, especially if uh, file management is... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me a large part of the responsibility of your web application, the loosely coupled nature of this. Uh, you don't have strong relationships between, obviously there'll be some records probably stored in the database about what files you have, and the fact that those aren't connected anyway to the actual files means you've got to manually delete files if you actually delete a record uh, for the file. Uh, if things get renamed or moved, then, you know, that's all manually has to be processed and kept synchronized between uh, whatever system you're using to track the inventory of uh, resources and files and the actual files where they're stored and so on and themselves. Another issue that can come up is it does require actually permissions for your scripts to work and access the file system on the server. Maybe not as big a big deal today as it used to be, but that can be an issue as well. So storing them actually in the database. Well, the big advantage here is that you can actually relate because it's just an object uh, record stored in a table in the database. So uh, you can relate it to other information. You can have join style queries, uh, referential integrity, and so on and so forth, right? Also, the fact that it's all in a single location and back up and store, hey, Databases are good at that kind of thing, so that should be uh, all right. And you don't need any special permissions uh, for accessing the file system for your web application. Uh, another thing I mentioned here is just the fact that all you really actually have to have is a connection to the database. So, you know, leaving aside your uh, web application, if this is uh, being hosted in your own uh, local area network or uh, in an enterprise situation like that, uh, there are other ways that you can maybe get at the file simply through the database connection itself. Cons. Uh, you can only access files to the database connection, which, you know, <laughs> has, there's both good and bad to that, obviously, as well. Uh, previewing the files, because they're stored, uh, basically, I'll give you a hint, as a byte array internally inside uh, uh, a field inside the database uh, table itself, you know, you don't actually get a, a preview of it unless you plan ahead and save some sort of a thumbnail image and things like that. You can do that, but uh, normally uh, you have to materialize the files first before you can preview them, right? Which is an extra bit of time and so on that's required. And of course, there is some code involved in actually pulling it out of the database and preparing it for download, right? It's not just a matter of sticking a link on a web page and having them click the link to download the file because it's just sitting there on the server. So a little bit more to it, and that's where sometimes a bit of a performance hit can come into play, although you'll find it's really not all that bad. Okay, so as I said, web form programmers have had it easy. They have a file upload control they can drag out of the toolbox, drop on their web form, and away they go. 
right? But it's not the end of the world for us. It's really not that difficult, uh, especially since Entity Framework is actually, uh, it's quite easy to work in code, even using Link. We have lots of control of the situation and uh, it's uh, all that, not, not that much code we have to write. So we'll focus on storing files in a database as that is the more complicated approach and needs more coding. It's pretty easy for you to search and find some easy examples of just doing a basic file upload and storing it in the file system on your own. Okay, so we still have to actually get it up there. So if you were to look carefully at the client side, like view source in the web page, even from one of those web forms using that fancy control, what you really see in the end is a standard HTML input type equals file, right? It's been around forever and a day, and even that fancy control will actually generate that type of HTML on the client side. So we can do the same, right? Just in our razor, in our view, something like uh, HTML helpers uh, form, begin form making sure we have the method set to post and the uh, enclosure type set to multi-part form data so that it can handle any kind of data we want to send up uh, from the file itself. We just need one of those input tags for the type equals file and obviously a submit button so we can submit the data back to our controller, right? So this will go inside of a view itself in our MVC application. Now, on the server side, we have to have some code to grab it. And this is basically the same kind of code you would write uh, just using that standard HTML input tag, right? Um, now, just to keep it simple, because the truth is uh, any uh, request coming in uh, through HTTP can actually have a collection of files, each one in in the .NET framework is interpreted as an HTTP file collection base object. Uh, so it can have a whole collection of them, but just keep our code simple for now. We'll just assume that we're uploading one file at a time. Just a note there, that input type equals file control only sends one at a time, but what people often do is they put, oh, I don't know, four, five, six even of those together on one HTML page. And so you can select multiple files and send them all at once with multiple input uh, type equals file controls. Okay, so keeping it simple, we only have one. It's really not that much more if you have a, a bunch, you just loop through with a for each loop. But uh, just keeping it simple for now, all I have to do is go to the request object, go to its files collection, and assuming that there is only one, or I just want the first, that will be index zero, right? So a good idea to pull the content type out, that gives us the mime type, and we can store that into a, a string. The path get file name is a nice built-in uh, function we can use to strip off all the extra C colon backslash type information that there might be the whole path and just get the actual file name with extension, mind you, itself and store that. And useful to have the file name so that when we download the file, we can make sure that the client gives it the same name. Of course, they can always rename it if they want, but that's okay. We want to give the name to them. And uh, just for internal purposes, we want to get the file length so that we can actually, as we read through the file, we know when to stop. So that is available in the next line of code here, request.file0, just grabbing the content length. Right? Now I just have an if here to make sure I actually have a file. Right? Um, you can do fancy extension methods to create Boolean has files type functionality. But you know, this works and it's nice and straightforward as well. Just checking if the file name is empty, an empty string or the length is zero, then hey, there's nothing here for me to worry about. So I don't wanna bother uploading it or saving what's been uploaded. So if there is something though, then uh, I just create basically a stream object uh, for the file stream, reading the input stream of my files object, file object. And then the next part is kind of the magic that works the whole thing and why it works so well in a database nowadays. What we can do is we can take uh, a byte array of uh, the digital information, because really, when you think about it, all files, all computer information comes down to ones and zeros, right? Those bits, of course, bits are usually grouped together into bytes and so on. But with that, arrangement, you can store any kind of information, whether it's a PDF file, a Word document, uh, a JPEG image, uh, uh, MP3 music file, uh, a video file, whatever, right? It all comes down to ones and zeros, and so it can be put into a byte array. So it's like a 
kind of like Harry Potter's magical cloak of invisibility. Only instead of invisibility, we can just wrap this special cloak of a byte array around any kind of file and then save it, right? So all we do is we do a read uh, from our stream, uh, reading the data into my byte array, my file data as it's called here, starting at the beginning, zero, and right through to the file length, the end of the content length. That's it. Now we actually have it in an object in memory uh, in our controller's code, so we can just save it into the database. So that comes next. So obviously we have to have a table to store it in, right? So how is that going to be set up and ready to receive it? Well, using Entity Framework code first, I'm assuming you're doing that because that's what we've been following in most of our uh, classroom work. Uh, we'll need a class, right, uh, that we have to use to store it. Now, this is just one simple, simple class. We have a ID, primary key, integer identity, as we usually do. Uh, we have a file content byte array, right? And that's going to actually store the content of the file. I'd, it's always a good idea to as well have a string. Uh, I set the length here to 256. Uh, the first bit of code I stole from somebody else on the web uh, only had a size of 50. And I quickly found that was not big enough because with the latest Word documents, MIME types are quite verbose in terms of their description. So I made it something bigger. And that's uh, how we can keep track of what type of file this should be interpreted as later on. And the file name as well. It's a good idea to leave, uh, leave room in the class to store that property as well so we know what the name of the file is. And you can add other things too. You might have file descriptions, etc., etc. Or, of course, this uh, basic arrangement can be incorporated. Uh, suppose you're going to upload, I don't know, graphic pictures of employees and have them in your employee table. Well, you could pick the appropriate fields out of this uh, class the appropriate properties and add them to your employee, right? And then, or do it in a one-to-one -one relationship so that you just set it up to have the byte arrays available for the ones that actually have uh, pictures and so on and so forth. Anyway, just a note here before we go on, that byte array, that magical cloak that we can wrap any file in, when we go to the database, you'll see that any framework will map it to a var binary max, right? I think the maximum size here is probably something like two gigs, which for a Word document, Excel spreadsheet, any kind of resource like we're working with here for the most part, will pretty easily fit in there. And uh, two gigs is a lot of room to store uh, uh, data. Okay. So obviously, of course, we have to have some basic plumbing in place for our entity framework. So we'd have a data context, a DB set, and so on and so forth. So we'll just assume that we have all that standard stuff in place for our uh, entity framework code first arrangement in our MVC application. So then the rest of our code that would come after actually reading the data from the uh, uploaded file, uh, that's the first three lines that are repeated from my earlier slide, just to show you where it all fits together. The next thing really comes into, if I, we have our file store class, as I was just showing you, just we make a new uh, object based on that class, instantiate a new file, and we set the content to the file data, which was our byte array, the MIME type we just grab and the file name we grab. There we go. Now we have created the object itself, a model object according to our entity framework model. And all I have to do is go to my DB set of file stores and add to this new object and save changes. Bada bing, bada boom. How do we download? Well, it actually takes less code, uh, although you'd probably want to add a little bit for uh, professionalism and so on. But basically all it really needs is to... Uh, grab it and uh, download it, right? So instead of an action result in the controller, what we can do is we can have a different kind of method in the controller, a file content result. Set it up to accept the ID of a file to download. And instead of returning a view, we specify we return a file, right? So when we return file, there's a few different overloads we can use. I would normally take the one that uh, has set up for three arguments, the byte array we pass, the MIME type we pass, and the file name. Uh, if you don't use that one with the file name, then it will just give every file downloaded the same name unless the user renames it. So that's usually the best approach I find. How does it look in code? Well, we can just use a simple link query, right? So if we're passing in the ID, uh, based on our class, uh, that's the primary key to identify which file object we want to download. 
then we can just do a simple link query to pull that up as a as a file object and when we say return we say return file passing that byte array which is in the file content as we set it up in our model class the mime type and the file name and that's all it really takes right then we can send a request for the file anywhere that we have the id right so if you think about the typical code we even have in an index page we often have a set of action links for things like edit and delete and so on and details perhaps so we can just make one for download so if we have a, a table listing of different files we can just click our little download link here calling our download file content result uh, action uh, or method i should say inside of our controller and there we go and we can download the file so that's how it looks in terms of uh, the basic uh, approach now one thing to be aware of these objects obviously these uh, file store objects can be quite large if you actually populate the file content that byte array from the database so if you're pulling up a whole collection of these right in order to say just produce a, a list on the page in an index view or something like that of you know what uh, a list of resources or files you have in the system we wouldn't want to actually materialize the entire file content in each one of those in order to just display this list of names on the screen because remember the byte array itself doesn't present very well in the form <laughs> right in the view so <coughs> <coughs> we would want to avoid that best solution is to I mean you could do this a number of ways but view models are a nice thing so make a view model object which basically is the same as your file object but without the content and when we do our link query we'll actually populate and uh, uh, create a collection of view model objects instead right so if we had a, a view model object called file store view model that was basically identical in structure to the actual file store class without that one property without the actual file content then we can do a link query something like this there's other ways to put this kind of query together but this is just the first one that popped into my head right so we're uh, selecting from our file store DB set and then what we can do is we can select the data that we're retrieving into a new object according to our uh, view model class that uh, as I said is identical to the actual file store class just without the one file content property so how link works is pretty smart when it sees that we're actually only accessing those three particular properties of our file store object uh, the ID the file name and the mime type if you actually look at the SQL created by this link query you'll find that it will only be selecting uh, basically projecting those three fields from the file stores table and in that case uh, it doesn't actually load the file content so it's very very fast thousand times faster who knows but really really fast and uh, much better for performance if we don't really need the content at this point in time leave it out with an approach like this okay so that's all the little ups and downs that i have to talk about for now i hope it helps make your life worth living